and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern day life. Dramatic pause. <laughs> Wait, I've just come up with an idea I need to write down before I forget it. What was it? It was the... Um, I can never spell potato. <laughs> <laughs> Not that again. <laughs> <laughs> I can never spell. I can never spell potato. Chloe, Naomi. Do you often put them in together in a sentence? Hi, Naomi. Chloe wants to know if she can borrow your potato peel. <laughs> oh. uh, answering your twenty-first century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas, like can I use a giant Yorkshire pudding instead of plates? Yes, absolutely. I had a Yorkshire pudding wrap recently. A Yorkshire pudding wrap mm, wasn't as. Good as what I was expecting. No. And should I do what meatloaf wouldn't do for love? <laughs> I always might write, you know that? I will do anything Thing for love. love. <laughs> but I, I won't, won't do so that. So <laughs> it was about 14, 15. Our Ryan said, you know what they're singing about, don't you? And I was like, no. And for years I thought it was true. He told me it was about anal. <laughs> well, I suspect, I mean, that's, that's the punchline in the pentos, yeah. Is it? Yeah. And that's, so it is true. I suspect so. I don't know whether it's entered the... And what would you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's entered something. But he was, he'd do anything for love, but he won't do that. Which is unusual for a man. Mm. But we're not usually like the answer, we're William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not, Jordan North. I'm more Savile Row, you're more Skid Row. Wow. Okay. That's from Tony Russell. A couple of reasons why that video was taken down, but anyway. No, 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 Skid Row. Skid Row meaning, um, like, was, I think Skid Row is, is like a down and out street. Oh. But I won't do that. Oh, no, no, I won't. You raise me up. No, you're a different song now. Should we just do a toast? Get me out of this godforsaken town. And then there's a bit in it where, will you hold me down with holy water? And they both at the same time go, will you hold me down with Hose holy me. water if I get too hot? Wow. Anyway, should we have a drink? Yes. Nothing. We had it for the live show. We're not having it again. Oh, yes. Uh, gin and a bonnet. Two parts to bonnet, one part gin. Would you feel free to do the gin? Two parts gin, two parts to bonnet. Oh, you had a good week. Oh. Christ. The gin makes a better, no better noise than the bonnet. Oh, my God, I've just realised that's an old bottle of de bonnet that we're drinking um, from. I bought it in especially for the live stream. Oh, you bought it? Oh, and we didn't notice. No. Sorry. You want to get We some... had a lot going on, all right? Have you put gin in there, please? I've put it in. Have you? Mm -hmm. You want to get some pseudocrine on that? <laughs> Thank you. The jokes write themselves, Gene Divas. They really do. Shall we toast Amazon Music, who a few weeks ago put us on a lovely billboard, which was a lovely way to end our fifth birthday week. In Leicester Square. In Leicester Square and that there London. We were there. In amongst the Schweppes adverts, we were there. Amazon Music. Amazon Music. Mm. That was a nightmare because basically we was trying to get our picture next to the billboard. but um, we, we became was... living statues in Leicester Square. Someone put a quid down. They thought we were living <laughs> statues. Um, we were waiting ages for our slide to come up. It mm. took about 10 minutes, didn't it? It, did, it, did, it, take, it took a while. We saw minutes. it once, was excited, and, and then we sweeps. thought, we'll have a photo. And scream. Shazam. Shazam. Not the app. Mm. The film. Yeah. There are lots, lots of lovely, lovely slides that we looked at. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexwithmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexwithmyboss or you can write to William who promises a handwritten reply on his own letter paper. The address for that is on the website sexwithmyboss.com. So yeah, live stream. Yes. Fifth birthday. It was fun. It was great. Thank you, were... you to everyone that watched. It's still available to watch now on YouTube, I think, isn't it? I believe it? so, yes. Yeah. Um, you were quite nervous, I think you were. Just I for was... the first five minutes. Was I? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was nervous too, but I, as we've discussed I, this before, I sort of... I thought I was all right. Yeah, no, you, no, you no, were. Was you, it wasn't nervous. like live show nerves. Oh, no, I hate live shows. But it was... I mean, I don't hate them, but... No. Thank you to everyone who comes. You should see me before. I'm a deck. Really? Oh, I'm a, I'm a wreck. So much so that an audience member... What? Yeah, carry on. An audience member messaged me, really lovely message saying, I could tell you was really nervous before you went live. He's like, but have more confidence and belief in yourself. It's a really lovely oh, message. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. But I was, yeah, I'd get nervous for that. Anyway, have you, carry on. have you had that framed? 
No. It's on the loo wall. One of your many loos. I've only got three. Shut up. <laughs> You're funny. Carry on. Uh, fifth birthday. But it was fun. It was nice. Yes, yeah, it was. It was nice to have so many people in the studio. I thought it was very buzzy. Yeah, it was buzzy. Yeah. It was buzzy. Can we, Mike, what was your favourite part of it? My favourite part of it was when we talked about bunk beds. Oh, it was very funny. I also liked, I liked the interact. I, I liked the fact, you know, obviously we're pre-recorded, basically. That's what podcasts are. So I liked the fact that we were able to see some of the things that people were saying. Obviously, it's quite distracting, so you can't look all the time because otherwise we'd just sit there reading and no one wants to tune into that. Mm. Um, but, yes, it was, it, was, it was nice. It was just sort of, it was like you, I would imagine like you get Monday to Thursday with radio live and the adrenaline was, was Oh, there. yeah. If you've had a good show afterwards, you're buzzing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed it overall. Thanks to everyone that watched us and a big thank you to everybody that's listened over the past five years. Yes. My favourite part, thanks for asking, was... Cue the music, Ben. <laughs> the potato peeler song. I mean, I think you have to give him some warning that that's, that's going to happen. Another, please, can we just have another listen to this? Who was it who sent it in again? Robbie James. Robbie James sent this in. Thank you, Robbie. So good. A long time ago in a land so far away A purple had a problem and was in a disarray A family needed feeding, she had a bag of spots She served the cupboards and the drawers amongst a place of mugs The answer to her problem came to a sobbing head She ran into her neighbour's house and this is what she said Oh, when they go on Can I borrow your potato peeler? <laughs> she said, when they go on can I borrow your potato peeler? Oh, Wendy, oh, uh, can I borrow your potato peeler? She said, Wendy, oh, uh, can I borrow your potato peeler? I love it. Oh, he, do you think he sounds, oh, this is a current, another current musical reference, do you think he sounds a bit like Eric Idle from Monty Python? You know the song Always Look on the Bright Side Always of Life? Always look, look on the, the bright side of life. Do do. <laughs> Always look on E Wood for shite. E Wood? It's what Burnley sings about Blackburn. Oh, right. Always look on. Oh, one man went to shit, shit, went to shit not, on E Wood. We're not doing one shit. One man had his dog spot, went to shit on E Wood. Two men went to shit. Went to shit on Ewood, two men on there, and then you get up to ten, you go, ten men went to shit, went to shit on Ewood, ten men on their dog spot, went to shit, nine men, eight men, seven men, six men, five men, four men, three men, two men, one man went to shit, shit, went to shit on Ewood. Gosh, you'd be exhausted after all those men. <laughs> oh, it's one man and his dog. Okay. Oh, I sung that wrong. It's not two men went to shit. It's two men on their dog spot. Oh, I sung it wrong. Anyway. Well, never mind. I'm sure we'll get letters. Anyway, Robbie, thank you very much for that. It was, it was, it was a, my... a huge highlight of the live stream. How's your week been? It's been weird. Okay. Can I just ask you, before I talk about my week, do you, you know Deja Vu? Where you think something happens and you think, oh. Deja Vu, didn't he used to work on this podcast? <laughs> Dave. That's, that's happened before. Was that Dave's surname, Deja Vu? Anyway, carry on. Um. Do you think you were anyone in a previous life? Mm. Oh, you do? Yeah. Who? I think I was a madam of a brothel. <laughs> no, in, I said in a previous life. I do. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, okay, so this isn't as weird then. Maybe, maybe I'm I should... joking, I don't know. Okay. I should cut Mikey some slack because Mikey has announced... I'll just say sorry to mm. interrupt. Um, I do think that I was a really horrible person in a previous life, hence why, mm, hence why all this shit happens now. Hang on. Someone's... There's somebody at the door. Someone's knocking on the door. Someone's, Someone's ringing, ringing your bell. Ben's just receiving a package. What was that? We just got a piece of pay for the podcast. And he said, this is for, I help sex my boss back in hell. Is that what he said? Oh, bless him. What a geezer. Should we, should we open it in a minute? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I feel like I, in a previous life, I was really horrible, hence why all this bad stuff happens to me. Okay. Now. Carry on. Well, Mikey announced the other day, we were out for dinner with Jonathan, and Mikey announced... <laughs> William, William, William. <laughs> William, 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 William. Please, Mikey. 
Mikey announced in a previous life he was Anne Boleyn. <laughs> Which, for context, just in case you don't know who Anne Boleyn was, one of Henry VIII's wives, one of the ones that got beheaded. And anyway, obviously Jonathan... I mean, Mikey had actually told me this a few few months before, but I had sort of forgotten slash, you know, tried to forget. Uh, obviously Jonathan was interrogating Mikey as to why he thinks he's Anne Boleyn. And God bless Mikey. He says, well, he gets lots of migraines. <laughs> How Jonathan and I held it together, I don't know. Did Anne Boleyn get lots of migraines? Well, she got her head chopped off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he is so dramatic. Jonathan then takes out a, a photo of Anne Boleyn and holds it up next to my key, or not a photo of Anne Boleyn, a, port- a portrait of Anne Boleyn. <laughs> yeah, and they have got very similar characteristics, quite, you know, pale skin, long neck, thin lips. So uh, that's a similarity. And then, jo- and then Jonathan said... Do you, do you have an aversion to, you know, wicker baskets? Why? Oh. <laughs> Head in basket. And, Ma- and Mikey, and this, to be fair, is true, Mikey went, well, I've never liked rattan furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true, because I wanted some rattan furniture on the terrace when we moved into where we are now, and he, he's forbidden it. So Mikey could be Anne Boleyn. But then... I've also learned, because I went to go and see Titanic in uh, New York, my family, extended family, were meeting whilst we were away. They met up for lunch. And James mentioned to my aunt and uncle that, you know, we'd gone to see Titanic. And my aunt Mandy, who will now be called Mad Mandy, suddenly chipped in with, I died on the Titanic. And she's being... And and she, like, to the point where James actually gets me going, I think Mandy actually is deadly serious about this. (laughs) And she doesn't want to talk too much about it because it's quite personal. So I'm sorry I'm sharing this on the podcast. You've met Mandy in Bristol when they came to the Bristol show a few years ago at St George's. And um, she can't listen. She can't listen to the Celine Dion song. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of which I Which I have pointed out was only around from the 90s. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't blasting out Celine Dion when the ship was going no, down. No, but the she... The violinist was from Burnley. Yeah, was he? Mm. Oh, OK. Or well, one fact. of the members of the band, anyway. Good facts. Um, but yeah, no, she can't. But she, th- she it, it evokes too many memories. So clearly, there's more to this. Is than... this a thing that people have past lives? Well, maybe maybe Auntie and Divas think they were someone in a past life. Imagine if I was royalty or really high up in society. Let me just imagine that. Let me just imagine that. <laughs> no, I can't imagine that. Mikey's, oh, you look so wounded. Mikey, so I would love to have been there at that conversation. So I reckon I'll rumble it. Oh, Mikey, 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 stop, stop. Bless Mikey. I know, sweet. So dramatic, isn't it? It all started apparently when, like, years ago, pre COVID, I took him to the Tower of London for Valentine's Day. And appara- I could have got you in there for free. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, it was years and years and years and years ago. Well, my, our Mandy's been there for years. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. I took him to the Tower of London for Valentine's Day, and it was when he went to the, the execution site at the Tower of London. That's apparently when the memories came flooding back, apparently. <laughs> You're winding me up. I'm really not. <laughs> People think I'm the weird one in the relationship. Are you joking? I'm very normal. <laughs> did he think it was Anne Boleyn? He did. Oh, it was the audio guide, apparently, that set him off. I, I, I mean, I'm finding this funny. If Mikey were here, he'd be getting really worked up that we're taking the mic. <laughs> Yeah, he will never hear this, so it's fine. I can't. He's genuinely serious yeah, about Anne it. Yeah, Berlin. He's so dramatic. Mm. No, I'm telling you now, Jordy. Honestly, I've had a sore neck since <laughs> 17th century. Honestly, I said to him he's been a pain in the neck for me for years, but that didn't go down very well. Oh, right, tell us this about watering restaurants that's been on that you. Well, another thing that when we went out for dinner, but every restaurant's doing it everywhere now. Even um, when we went to New York, I noticed that they do it. That you know, you sit down and they'll come over and say you know, any allergies and all that chat. And they go, can we get you any water, still or sparkling? No, tap is absolutely fine, thank you. Don't don't try and upsell immediately. Is that your big thing? We don't, I'm, look, I'm, I, re, I mean, if you want sparkling water, obviously that's fine, that's different, you pay for that bottle. That's not a problem because there's a process that's gone into it. But we are very, very lucky in this country and most of Western, the Western world that we have clean tap water and it's not full of germs. Apart from in London. Don't get me started on Well, no, London but it's not going to kill you. Oh, I do. I, honestly, Gene and have said this before. If you ever want to get a conversation going, say it's lulling a bit and there's a few northerners there, just say, what do you think of, t- what do you think of the tap water in London? Oh, we'll get going. <laughs> the hours must fly by. Oh, it will. Carry on. We are very lucky that we have water that is not full of bacteria, 
tap water is absolutely fine, thank you very much. No. But then you feel like a cheapskate for saying tap water, although my new thing to say tap water without saying the word tap water is just some table water, please. Or council pop. Yeah, I don't think in London they'd get that. Just some council pop will do, thanks. Like, they're just saying still or sparkling because tap's not as nice. No, but they should go still, still sparkling or table water is what they should say, or tap water. I can't believe you're getting uppity about that. No, because then when you say tap, they sort of look at you as if to go... Yeah, because all, all the pounds Europeans on. have that fancy Italian one that's really nice. You know, when you get that... When What's not, it called? When you're not drinking. I don't know. What's it called? San Pellegrino. San Pellegrino. Yeah, but that's fizzy water. Yeah, and you're like, oh, we're drinking San Pellegrino. Aren't we exotic? But, yeah. This is what... Do you, know only... what, do you know what I want? We should do a spin-off, Jordan's European Adventures, inspired by... Bonjour, 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 bonjour. <laughs> inspired by, when I open the window, I feel European. I say, I do. When I open the window in the morning, it's because of my European hereditaries. You what? What? Heritage. Heritage. <laughs> what did... Hereditaries. <laughs> it's because of my European her heritage. Heritage, right. You know, British Britain is European, but, yeah... Yes. Well, I mean, there was a lot of debate on TikTok when we posted that video. We are in the continent of Europe. Okay. Let's put it that way. But the water thing, it's not like when I worked at M&S and we used to have to sell, um, they weren't fig rolls. What were they called? They used to put stuff on the till and at the end we'd say, oh, by the way, we've got these on offer. Yes. And they, you'd have to upsell them. It's like specials in a restaurant. It's what can we try and get rid of today? Oh, is that what yeah. they say? Is that what specials are? It's what's going off in the kitchen tomorrow that we need to shift oh, today. Oh, I never knew that about specials. Yeah. Anyway. It's not that, if it's that, that special, they put it on the menu. Anyway, William's Restaurant Wipes. <laughs> How's your week been? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, at the time of recording, I've got Rick coming up. Yes. He's on the train. So he's coming down. He's coming but down. We, we have had this before on this podcast. He's coming down from Preston, and I, I said I'm busy all day Friday because I'm working most of today. And he's got a train at eleven. I was so like, what he'll get in where? Well, he's going to come and meet us here. He, oh right, he gets in in the next half hour. So he's going to meet us here. But yeah, so we're going to watch our favourite um, boyhood band. Oh, um, the Cortinas. The Cortinas. Yes, yeah. you've told us about this. Yes, yes. we're going to okay. watch that. Bit worried because last time Rick came to London. Um, have you ever been barred from a shop? <laughs> no. We got barred from a shop, I'm not joking, because mm. Rick dropped the smelliest, most disgusting, bitter fart. You I thought have, we're not doing bottoms. <laughs> you have ever... <laughs> As it were. Seriously, it was that bad. The guy mm. came from the counter. We, it was like midnight. We were getting some beers in and some vodka and stuff. The guy came from behind the counter and got... A bottle of Febreze off the shelf, <laughs> off his own shelf, sprayed it round the shop and sprayed us out the shop. Wow. And the raid was there. Oh, so this was recently? Yeah, no, yeah, it was about three, four, before pandemic. And the raid was like, Here, you, your, your ass stinks, you need to go and get the doctor. <laughs> so I'm a bit worried about that because when we're, we're going on an all day here today, I love an all day. I've not been on an all day in a You can come and join us if you want. Um, we're going on Ben's an all day. Ben's got a job. <laughs> But I'm also worried because mm -hmm. we're going on an all day. -er, so well, you're start. I mean, we're doing this until about one, yeah. so it's not really all day. No, yeah, it's just start about one, two o'clock, and I might have. It's a surprise for him, so don't tell him. But I've arranged for um, a stripper. No, for us to meet Liam. Oh, the lead singer of the Cortinas. Yes. So I've never met him before as well, and I'm really nervous because it's like we well, don't meet your idols. But I just we've messaged, a few, we've DM'd a few times. Have you got your auto autograph book? No, I'm not going to turn up. Oh, yeah, I've got my Burnley one actually. We all my players in. So for that. why am I whispering? But um, I DM'd him and we've messaged, mm -hmm. and I just said I'll come and see you on oh, Friday. Nice. And he messaged back saying I'll come backstage for a beer. <laughs> that's like. ZZ Zalen beating, what's she called? ZZ Strallen. ZZ Strallen. That's yeah. like Patricia Routledge to you saying, <laughs> come and have some cake, come up for some cake and coffee. Come have my cake. That's like her right. saying that. Is it? So I'm having a beer with him afterwards. Oh, that's And nice. if he farts backstage or shows me up. Fish. Yeah, you can't fart in front of the Cortinas. No, my brother calls him Rick the Tank. Rick the Tank. Yeah, did you ever watch old school Frank the Tank? No. Really sensible. No. It was played by Will Ferrell. And then when he's drunk, he just gets naked and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yes, he's that got, sounds like Rick, to be it's fair. It's so cute. He's got a pass because he's got two kids now. Oh. So he's got a pass. But he's really He's excited. got a pass? Yeah, pass from... Not a pass as in from, the, from his wife. He's going to have three kids by the end no. of the weekend. <laughs> no, not like that. Don't be daft. 
but like to come down. And, yeah. Oh, I see. So he's, he's texted me every day this week going, three days to go. Oh, yeah, that's sweet. sweet. He can count. That's yeah. nice. Anyway, also as well, we should mm-hmm. talk about um, Ben and Kat are going to a wedding this weekend. Well, yes. Kat's already started pre-drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Diego... That's being left at home. No, with some strangers. With strangers? They, they are George, William, so they're pissing off to a wedding. I'm not invited. Don't... Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. It's really upsetting. So they're pissing off to a wedding in Macclesfield. I mean, I'm glad I'm not going, if I'm honest. <laughs> Macclesfield. Anyway, they've left me with two strangers on an app. It's called My Doggy Pell or something. So they put me up with some, some straight couple in Shoreditch. <laughs> How am I going to cope, boys? Sorry, a strange couple in Shoreditch. Mm. Is it in Shoreditch? Yeah. What's the app called? Borrow My Doggy. Borrow My Doggy. I've, I've had it with them. I was last week when they pissed off to South Africa. I was... <laughs> actually went South Africa in there. Yes, you did. They left me, they left me with the in-laws. I just, just can't cope anymore. They don't want me, boys. Well, poor Diego. I love Diego. I said to yeah, him... Yeah, you I said, and Rick could look after him. I said, well, not this weekend, but I said, I said I'd have Diego if you freeze, like... You are never free. I was like, yeah. Anyway. True. What, and what, what's Rick going to be doing when you're working tomorrow? I know, I've got a... Um, you can't I, take him on TV. Oh, God, no, I'll never work again. No. <laughs> no. Um, I could bring him as my little helper. Oh, he'd love that, I'm no, sure. Um, he, yeah, because I, I, I've got an deck tomorrow. Car's coming at like eight. It more gone about. I'm going to be rough. Should we go to your jolly joke of the week? Yeah. Here's the jingle. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's jolly joke of the week. Cha cha cha. You're not using the book? I found one. Oh. And a listener sent me this one. This is from Andy Johnson. Andy Johnson sent me this, June Diva. My pet mouse Elvis died last night, and I'll tell you the punchline after the break. Okay, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us, and thanks to Andy Johnson for sending us this jolly joke of the week. My pet mouse Elvis died last night. He was caught in a trap. <laughs> come on, come. That's made me laugh. I love him. Love this is a very musical much, episode. Baby. Should we call this it's Help put, It's a um, Musical Special? Yeah, it's, so it's also something of one what do you get hanging from pear trees? I don't know. Sore arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm halfway through me. The last of my Elvis book, you know, there's two. Oh, it's hard to read at times. It's oh. all falling apart. Has he gone to the loo yet? No, don't. Spoiler alert. Well, I mean, I think people know that. But it's, it's like... Cause ben, he, about ben didn't know Elvis was dead. He no, died on bog. Yeah, no, yeah. You're not recording? No, I am recording. What? You look really worried. I just remembered what happened to me. What? It's unrelated to that. But... Do you oh, think God. you were Elvis in you a previous life? <laughs> Jesus Christ. What happened to you? I was sat. Sitting. <laughs> <laughs> On the sofa. And yeah. I heard these noises to my left. The kitchen's right there. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Jump on a mic. Go on. I don't have a mic. Right, go on. We can come hear. here. Come here. Come here. Tell us what happened. This pod- Sorry, Gene Davis, this episode's all over, Gaffed. You're not going to like this. No, I'm not going to like this. I'm never coming around again, am I? Yeah. I was sat there, so and I was just chilling, watching TV, and I heard this, I was, this like, sort of, sort of squeaking noise to my left, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Diego's here, so it's not him. And I looked to my left, and, like, just below my cooker, there's just a fucking mouse staring at me. A big one? Like, just, like, like, a tiny little mouse just there, like... What's it like? It shocks at me, and I was like, "Fuck!" What did it do? Shows again. Shows shows the face again. What did it do? (laughs) (laughs) And I was looking at him like, and then he scurried off. What did Diego do? Diego, I was like, he's free range. Oh, George, he's a mess. I was. (laughs) Oh, Daddy, I've just seen a mouse. Daddy, quick, come quick. Oh, it's oh, it's a big, oh, it's a rat. I looked at. It's a what? A rat. (laughs) (laughs) I looked at Diego. Sort of expecting him to be like, right, he's toast, or another. I don't think dogs thorn. eat mice, though, really. Mm. Well, he's ch- you should see, see him with a squirrel. He loves Well, a that's squirrel. not a mouse, is it? No, I know, but I, I, he's just lying there. So there looking is a at mouse. Well. Is he allowed off? The- <laughs> I was like, you're supposed to be getting that. 
Can I just ask, you were on the sofa, mm. yeah, watching TV, yeah. chilling. Was this on sexted time? <laughs> <laughs> what time and day was this? Let, no, let this me guess. was in an evening. This was oh, an evening. Frigging Wednesday afternoon when he's on sexted time, I bet. And so there is a mouse loose around your house? There is, a, there potentially, yeah. Okay. I've not heard him since. You need to get, well, d- 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 he will be there somewhere. No, he's gone. And, you, and that's a worrying because you vacuum in the dark. Why is that worrying? Well, because you're cleaning up crumbs, and that's what attracts mice. Uh, oh. Yeah, I need to hoover a bit more. You okay. do need, and get some traps down. Anyway. Thank God, it's our turn f- to, well, f- to come to oh, dinner. That's why I was thinking of the mouse, because you said the trap. Joke. Look, the, right. the reason I love Elvis is because he was super talented, and he was... Uh, a, do, you, do you think you'll like him? And he was... A, what's, the be- what's a better word for trendsetter? Uh, an influencer. He was a, an innovator. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I've just got to the part where he meets the Beatles for the first time. Oh. And he was a bit rude to the Beatles. Oh. And John Lennon said to his person afterwards, like, it's great to me. And can you just say the reason? John Lennon said mm. the reason why I'm here because of this man. And this is, we're at the part where he's doing all the movies that he don't want to do. Such a, it's films. hard to read because he was so talented, such, such a beautiful mm. man. And he's putting weight on and his temper's up and down because he's on the uppers and downers. Mm. Anyway, don't let me go about that, but. Just reading about it. Mm. Mm. No, it's marvellous. It's good. Well, uh, books books are great. And of course, as you know, Gene Devers, we've all been busy <laughs> writing up a storm on our very first book. <laughs> See what I did there? Who's put, whose story was worse there, mine or Ben's? The Help I Sex My Boss book is going to be just like the podcast and be full of never-before-heard dilemmas. Um, it will be ready for you to purchase at the end of the year, although you can pre-order it now. Uh, nice little Christmas gift. Uh, or whatever, or people's birthdays after the, yeah, after the 9th of November. Um, so if you want to pre-order your copy, you can head to sexedmyboss.com slash book. Please do pre-order if you want to get that in early. There's still some signed copies available as well. Okay. But they won't but be there limited, forever. They're, they're limited, yeah, So, okay. yeah, sexofmyboss.com forward slash book. William Hampton, let's go to the listeners' questions. Okay, this is from Taylor, and that's a female Taylor, uh, and she's from the South East U.S., Hello, William Jordan and producer Ben. I'm getting married this year. Jordan mentioned that love finds you unexpectedly, and that is my story. I had just about given up on love when I met my amazing fiancé, and we both couldn't be happier. We couldn't be happier. Don't worry. I share this information to give context to the fact that I know love is challenging and that others do not share my experience. That said, I'm receiving a lot of negative comments about marriage, especially at work. In one instance, an employee I supervised finished up a diatribe against marriage with a statement that she's never met anyone who is happily married. I channeled my inner William and said, gosh, followed by, that's really sad. What is the best way to respond to these unhelpful comments about without threatening my job? Warmest regards, Taylor from Southeast US. To be fair, I don't know anyone happily married. Oh, for God! I'm oh, joking. shut up! I'm joking. Sorry, that's I... not true. My mum and dad are happily married. Yes, and ditto my parents, and, and ditto lots of people I know. But it's usually it's older people. Like when you say they get married, it'll be my mum. She'll be like, "Oh, they don't know what's coming to them," that kind of thing. Mm. But um. It's yeah. unfortunate, but I, I think I think an, a non-committal gosh, to be perfectly honest, Taylor, is perfect. Perfect. Don't 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 get dragged down into the negativity. Yeah. Negativity brings you down. Yeah. Kill the negativity with your positivity. Oh. Yeah. That's what I've got. I that say. on a tea towel. Yeah. Kill your negativity with calm down and kill your negativity with a positivity. That's what I say. Don't let. We've just had a tweet saying, "When are we doing more merch? Let's do that one." <laughs> this goes to the old saying. Don't let the bastards drag you down. Yes. Oh, that in itself is quite a negative comment. No, it's not. Well, yeah, because you're you're Sorry assuming. To swear. Yeah, Sorry I to think swear. that ship sailed. No, I don't. I don't swear that much on this podcast. Okay, fine. You tell yourself that. All right. Gosh. Sorry. <laughs> this is from Joanne in Edinburgh. Dear William and Jordan, I'm hoping for your advice on quite a mortifying event that happened last week. I went to the gym and, as usual, I listened to your podcast whilst running. I had just finished on the treadmill and, as always, I left my phone and AirPods on the machine to get some wipes so I could wipe down the machine. This short trip of crossing the gym and back takes the 20 seconds or max. I returned to the machine and, to my horror, my AirPods were gone. My iPhone was still there exactly where I left it, but the AirPods had vanished. Before assuming the worst, I checked the floor around the machine and in my pockets. I even retraced my steps across the gym, and they were nowhere to be seen. I came to the firm conclusion that they had been stolen. 
I went back to my flat and decided to leave a rather grumpy voicemail to my gym explaining that one of their members is a thief. I then get a call from my best friend who tells me that she found my AirPods in her car, a car I had not been in since the day before. To my horror, I realised that the AirPods I had been using in the gym were not actually mine, and I had somehow put someone else's grotty AirPods in my ears. Whilst I was getting the wipes, they must have swiftly retrieved their property. The victim had become the perpetrator as I realised I was actually the one who had stolen someone's AirPods. Now, as disgusted as I am, I don't think this was entirely my fault as the owners of the AirPods had not come up had not come up to me on the treadmill and informed me of my mistake. What is the etiquette for seeing a complete stranger mistaking your headphones for theirs? Lots of loves and hugs. Joanne in Edinburgh. Joanne, so much to talk about here, mainly because this... I was raging. On, I was absolutely fuming. So, Joanne, on Monday, um, after our live recording, William took my AirPods, and, which really pissed me off because I'm get, lost not, without them. Not on purpose. Well, I'm lost without them. You should try them out. Right? And so I've been walking around with wired headphones like it's 2008. Yeah. Right? Which is, which is fine, but they're not as good, especially when you're running and stuff and going to the gym. I'm lost without them. And then... Passive aggressiveness of the week. He hands them back to me before the recording today and says, I've wiped them down. Jordan, I mean, I have taken a photograph of what they look like before. My- I will not release that photograph out of respect for you. They are minging, aren't they? I uh, will tell you what happened. So I, they were li- on this table. And as we left, I went, oh, there are my AirPods. Put them in, took them, walked off. They are minging. I wanted to wipe them I then back. get on the, on the tube. I open them up to put them in my ears and... How do I put this? The inside of the case was brown. It worked. There, was, there were lots of brown patches. Was it from my ear? I don't know what it was from. I'm sorry. I'm I've trying got a not lot to... of ear wax. Yeah. Well, can we get? We'll get onto that in a minute. So I'm like, these are not my AirPods. What on earth has happened? Then I realise when they won't then connect, they're not my AirPods. I then find my AirPods, thankfully, in my bag. <laughs> And then I quite clearly realised, because apparently you got a notification that your AirPods were not with you, because it kept telling me, the owner of these AirPods can see your location. Really threatening. It's like, fine. Well, he knows where I live. Oh, it's not. A, it's not a problem. Is that when you were in that dungeon in Soho? <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so last night I charged them up to full charge oh, before I returned them because I thought that was good etiquette, and and I thought you might want to use them originally. And I thought, well, I'll give them a little bit of a clean. Well, I started to clean the case. Not all the marks would come off. I then looked at the earbuds. Don't. I feel really. They are. I've been meaning to wipe them down for ages. <laughs> Sorry. I've got an overactive ear. (laughs) Apparently it's from talking, because you talk a lot. If you do a lot of jaw movement... Yeah. (laughs) Is that from the talking? You do a lot of jaw movement and talking, it produces more earwax, apparently. Right. So, yeah. You tell yourself that. Anyway, what's your advice to Joanne in Edinburgh? Um... If you see it, I think you've just got to go up and be like, I'm so sorry, just explain the situation. But but she, the thing is, Joanne doesn't know who, oh, yeah. whose Air, AirPods they were. Just leave it, Joanne. So I think leave it. If yeah. they do come up and say something, you say, oh, gosh, gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm s- ever so sorry. What you could do, Joanne, because Mike and I used to take each other's AirPods and that caused dramas every time. Oh, he, I bet. Yeah, I he, bet got, he, he got a case, a coloured case. Oh, so his get... is now green. Oh, where'd you get them from? Just the internet. A coloured case. Yes, a little protective case, a little sleeve that goes over the top so we know that the green ones are his and the white ones are mine. Okay. So Very I would well. suggest you do that. Or get yours engraved if you want to be, mm-hmm. you know, zhuzhi. When you buy new ones, if, you, if they bring out new ones, which they probably will every five minutes, you can, you can um, get them engraved. Okay. Which yeah. is often a free service. This is from Lizzie. Dear William and Jordan, I'm in desperate need of some advice. My boyfriend is in the Marines. And I'm endlessly proud of him. Yes. What? There's beef between the Marines and the Paris. Oh, really? Yeah. So What's the beef? Well, they're just rivals, aren't they? Oh, okay. I won't be... Um, what, what did you say? I'm... Endlessly proud of him. You'd be even proud if he was a para. Oh, God. You can go. tell him that. Crap hats. They're not crap hats, Marines, actually. When he's in the UK, he's based at least 300 miles away from me and is currently deployed for six months on the other side of the world. This is our eighth deployment in the last two years. This alone is awful. However, my dilemma is that my friends here sit and complain that they can't see their other halves after two days. Alongside this, I get constant comments of, I don't know how you do it. I could never do it. He definitely cheats on you. Is it even (gasps) worth it? You knew what you signed up for. 
This is hard enough for me as it is, as I miss him dearly, but it's made even harder when there is zero support from my nearest and dearest. Any advice? And what is the nicest way to tell people to get a grip and do one? My endless love to you both, Lizzie. Lizzie, like, I totally get this. My dad was away all the time when I was younger, like, and would go away for six months at a time. Mm. And my brother's away a lot at the moment and he's got two kids and his wife, um, Kate, you know, hates it when he's away. But, you, you know, they say like distance makes the heart grow fonder, which I do believe in. But um, you again, you just can't, you can't start taking on that negativity. Like, no. And it, it's one of those, right, is what, what I always say to people who are in the army, when and no one else will quite experience it and even now is when your dad mm. or your husband's away that weekend they get back it's usually on a weekend there is no nothing more exciting so they'll never experience that like when he's away and you know you that weekend he's coming back and you've got like he's got two weeks leave there is no better two weeks in your life, it's great. When my dad used to come back, it was, we'd, we'd get spoiled, we used to go out all the time, we'd go to restaurants, we could get any toy we wanted because he felt guilty for being away. Mm -hmm. So there's always that. Plus, <clears throat> as well, it definitely does get easier. You do get used to it. And there's some ups and downs as well in, in the army when you're not away. You do, you, a lot of people in the army won't like me saying this, but it's like, to, you do get good leave. I was telling you, you get two weeks off at Christmas, two weeks off at Easter, you get a month off. So your partners... Your, How does that work? Your friend's partners won't get as much time How does off. everyone in the army get two weeks off? Because that would be a really good time to invade. They do. Um, there's loads of squaddies who going to get touched now and go, oh, yeah, I know, I get it, but it, 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 it kind of works both because they'll be away, but... Yeah, in okay. the army you get good leave. You get, I think you get a full month off in the summer. Okay. You get like four weeks off, maybe three. Depends. But you, you are away a lot. And my brother's going away soon, but it does get easier. Don't take on board that negativity. Yeah, um, Lizzie, I, I agree. It's unfortunate your friends are saying that. It's really, it's really rubbish of them. And I think I would just be quite honest with them and go, I actually don't find that very supportive. Yeah. Do remember here, they are being unsupportive of you. So don't panic too much about turning around and just saying something quite honest to them because they're clearly not worrying about your feelings, not probably consciously, um, so I wouldn't massively worry about theirs. You probably still like them as friends, but I think turning around going, well, that's not really supportive, it's really difficult, maybe let's not talk about this. Mm. And then it's up to them as to how they feel and to what they do off the back of it. Yeah. Sorry about taking the mickeys in the Marines. Also, um, my brother got promoted recently. Congratulations. Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major. Mm. And what's, the, what's below a Sergeant Major? Uh, that sounds like a joke. That's not what I mean. Uh, colour sergeant. Colour sergeant. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So it's private, lance corporal. There's so many people in the army now, bro. Corporal, sergeant, colour sergeant, sergeant major. Then it goes to like. Minister of defence. No, you've got like RQMS. Regimental, uh, what? Regimental quartermaster. So oh. you'd you'd like that. That's why they're in charge of all the stalls and the, I don't know. In the stalls. Like they look what, after all the, the kit. They look after the kit and stuff. Oh, I see. My, I hope our Ryan's not listening to this because he'll be going, he'll be going mad. Write in Ryan if you are. <clears throat> Let us know. This is from anonymous. Hi, William Jordan EPB. I'm a recently single lesbian and I have been enjoying myself and others recently. Mm. The whole office. Why did you do it mm, then? The whole office knows about my weekend antique. Antiques? Antiques. <laughs> Lesbian, unlikely. <laughs> Keep that. There's, there's bad between lesbians and gays. They love it. It'll all be from Ikea. The whole office knows about my weekend antiques. And Any lesbians, please get in touch and give shit back to William, please. Can you remember when we had lesbians in Ireland? And they were in the front row. Can you remember on our tour? Yeah. In that, they were hilarious. Yeah. Love them. I think you went lesbians in Ireland, didn't you? <laughs> What's that? I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, the whole office knows about my weekend antics, and they love the scandalous existence I now live. However, last weekend, I went out with friends, and I got chatting with a very forward young lady. She told me she was visiting home from university, and she was staying at her parents' house. She had never been with another woman before, but she knew she was interested. She later told me her parents were away for the weekend, and she had the house to herself. After far too many drinks and some kissing, I found myself in a taxi with her heading to her house for coffee. 
We had an amazing night between the sheets and again in the morning. After showers, play, after showers and redressing, she was in the kitchen actually making the coffee, whilst I pursued the family lounge. To my absolute heart-stopping shock, upon the fireplace, pride and place, was a family photo of this young lady and her parents, one of which was my boss. I really like this girl and we've been in touch throughout the week. But what the hell do I do? Oh, she's the only child shit. and they have no idea she's gay, yet alone with the office lemon tart. I don't know what that means. Do I continue to see how it goes? Do I call it off? Do I tell her I work with her mother? Do I tell my boss I've shanked her daughter? Many thanks, Anonymous. Help, I've shanked my boss's daughter. Yes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, pr I probably wouldn't say anything. Well. It's an issue in your head, but... In innocence is a wonderful thing, or what's the um, ignorance. ignorance is bliss? That's what I mean. Wow, wow. I mean, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I mean, there's obviously, you know, I wouldn't look, I have not walked a mile in your Doc Martin, so I wouldn't <laughs> stop it. <laughs> it's, it's... <laughs> this is. The, sorry, anonymous. This is the. This is like when Cam and Mitch on Modern Family meet the. Um, the lesbians. The lesbians. The lesbians. They're all they're both yeah. bitchy to each other. Um, look, I, first of all, my advice is you speak to the girl. Mm. You explain the situation and see what she says. If she says, "Oh my God, please don't tell my mum," which I imagine she will, probably, um, or my dad, whoever the boss is, please don't tell. But speak to her first, and then. Then go from there, but I, I don't think you need to tell your boss. I don't. No. Why? 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 No. Of course you but don't. Need speak to. to the girl and let her know, especially if you want to see her again, and just say. But reassure the girl. Just say, look, this is totally between us. But I just wanted to let you know that. Um, you, I wanted to let you know before it becomes awkward, or you find out yeah. in yeah. front of your yeah. boss, or in front of your your mother, father, whatever. Um, I th yes, I think communication is key here, as I say so many times, but there's no need for you to tell the boss, but I would tell the daughter. Speak to the daughter, and believe you me, it's happened before. Any experience? No, oh God, no. No, but we do boss fashions on Radio 1, and it's always one we get. Boss fashions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing a feature with boss it's in the title. quite similar, actually, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Anyway. So there's, hang on, so your radio show, can I just, you've got Boss Fashions and Judge Jordan. Can I ask where you came up with those features? No ideas? such thing as a new idea. And do you know what we say in the industry? Mm. Scott Mills has probably done it anyway. Oh, that's nice. So that's what we say. Yeah. Like we go, oh, did Mills do this? For, probably yes. He probably did it three, four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, because he's that good. That he's nice. probably done every idea that you think of. Here, here. Well, Jordan, what's coming up in the weekend release? Uh, Jordan has some... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Speak to me. Refer to myself. In. I've got some entries for my Northern Dictionary. Just, just say it, as it with a bit of conviction. Jordan, what's coming up in the weekend release? I've got some entries for my Northern Dictionary. <laughs> Jesus and Christ. we hear from our gene divas who are walking around in the nude at home. Have we recorded that? No, we're about to, but he knows what's on the script. Oh, just say it again. No, with... it's done now. As always, remember you can listen every Tuesday and Friday and watch us on YouTube on Sundays and share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com. You can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexandmyboss or you can write to William who promises a handwritten reply in his own letter to paper. The address is on the website, sexandmyboss.com. For now, boys, back to you in the studio. Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> That's all from Villaricky, boys. Back to you. Oh, sorry, I'm... You're so tedious. <laughs> <laughs>